Introduction Hydroelectric power plant is a major renewable energy source used all over the world today to produce electricity. Hydropower, also known as a water power, is a falling or fast running water to produce electricity or to power machine. Components Catchment area, water reservoir, dam, penstock, pressure channel, search tank, water turbine, alternator. Water reservoir in hydroelectric power plant, there must be continuous supply of water. Water reservoir's main function are to store a net amount of water in it during rainy season and supply it throughout the year. Dam The dam is used in hydro power plant to increase the capacity of reservoir. It is also helped to increase the working head of the power plant. Penstock a pipeline fixed between the surge tank and prime mover is known as penstock. It is commonly made of reinforced concrete or steel. Pressure channel. The main aim is to regulating the reservoir. In the plant, when the load is decreased initially, then water provided for increasing load creates the water pressure. Surge tank. Surge tank is introduced in between the powerhouse and dam to avoid sudden rise in the penstock. As the load is reduced, then there will be a backflow of water inside the penstock. The backflow of water is known as water hammer. Water turbine. Water turbine converts kinetic energy into mechanical energy to produce electric energy. The energy in the turbine shaft is mechanical energy and this is used to run the electric generator. Working rule The working principle of the electric power plant is that it converts the potential energy into electric energy. At the plant level, water flows through a pipe also known as penstock and then spins the blade in a turbine which in turn spins a generator that ultimately produce electricity. When water flows heavily, the turbine rotates and the current generates an electric motor and this current is passed to the generator and the light blinks. Advantages No fuel required, less maintenance, takes small time to run, neat and clean. They also help in irrigation and controlling floods. Maintenance cost is low. Disadvantages Initial cost of plant is high. Power generation is depend on the quantity of water available which may vary from season to season and year to year. Conclusion Due to fast that the world is now looking for alternative source of energy and given the fast that We all know that the street lights which we see every day consumes a huge amount of electricity and to overcome that we need a new system. My name is Shravya Shri and I am going to talk about automatic street lights. The history of street lights. Historically, street lights were introduced to combat crimes after daylight hours. Although this is still a major justification for installing and maintaining street lights, the chief purpose now is to reduce the accidents during night time. There are records of attempts to wear light public places and crossroads. And in the year 1932, high pressure mercury and low pressure sodium lamps were used in street lights. The idea of designing a new system for the street lights that do not consume huge amount of electricity and eliminates large areas with highest intensity of light is concerning each engineer working in this field. Providing street lights is one of the most important and expensive responsibility of a city. Lightning can account for 10 to 38 percent of the total energy bills in typical cities worldwide. Street light is particularly a critical concern for public authorities in developing countries because of its strategic importance for economic, 
and social stability. Inefficient lightning wastes significant financial resources every year. Poor lightning creates unsafe conditions. Energy efficient technologies and designing mechanisms can reduce cost of the street lights drastically. In today's world, street lights are very much required in populated regions due to the busy lifestyle of humans. Switching operations on street lights are not carried out on time, and a huge amount of electricity is being wasted. In the present system, it is observed that the street lights are not turned off even when there is ample amount of light and are turned on even before sunset. In time-based street light control system, the on and off time differs noticeably during sunny and rainy days. To overcome this problem, an automatic street light controller is to be designed. The project's main aim is to eliminate the manual operations and to design an energy efficient automatic street light controller using light dependent resistor and microcontroller. The programming language used for developing codes to the microcontroller is C language. This automatic street light control system requires less maintenance and it is highly reliable. The LCD displays the real time and the variations in the voltage across the LDR circuit. Due to the change in the illumination of sunlight, the real-time on and off time settings are done using the keyboard and LCD display. The change in the voltage across LDR circuit and the on and off time settings analyzed by the microcontroller and enables the automatic switching operations when the switching conditions are satisfied. The system is high. Hello everyone, I am Vaishnavi. I am from Kasurpa Gandhi degree and PG College. Today, I am going to demonstrate a working model on wireless power transmission. So let's see what is wireless communication. It is a method of passing information from one point to another without using any physical medium. The transmission of information in a wireless communication system takes place through space. In a wired communication system, the transfer of information often takes place through a physical medium like wires or cables. So how does the transmission of signals takes place through space? It is achieved using antennas which are electrical devices and transform electrical signals into radio signals in the form of electromagnetic waves and vice versa. These waves consist of both electrical and magnetic fields oscillating perpendicular to each other and the direction of propagation of these waves is perpendicular to both the fields. There are two important elements in wireless communication. The first one is the channel. The channel is the medium in which the signal is transmitted. And the second one is the reception path. The reception path receives the signals from the channel and reproduces it as a source signal. The wireless communication has a very wide range of applications. The main applications are in television and radio broadcasting, satellite communication, radars, mobile telephone systems, global positioning system, Wi-Fi, infrared communication, Bluetooth, radio frequency identification, cordless phones, paging, etc. These all applications are majorly used in schools, offices, workplaces, etc. making it easier to transmit information from one point to another without any physical medium. Wireless communication has its own advantages and disadvantages. Some of the major advantages are the lower cost of installing the infrastructure, easy to move around while being connected to the network, less time taking to set up a network, the damage of cables or wires is ruled out, the loss is minimized in case of accidents or disasters. The disadvantages of wireless communication are there is a possibility of cross connection between the signals of devices that operate on same frequency there is always a threat to the security of the information that is transmitted using wireless communication the radiations that are caused due to the wireless communication are hazardous to health now let's get to know about wireless power transmission the working principle of wireless power transfer is the inductive power transfer. 
The important elements of wireless power transmission are antennas and signal strength. Antennas are a group of electrical devices which are connected either to the transmitter or receiver which convert electrical current into electromagnetic waves. These antennas are mostly used in television and radio broadcasting and also in satellite communication. Signal strength is another important element in the wireless transmission. The strength of a signal is defined as transmitted power output received by an antenna receiver. RSSI or Receiver Signal Strength Indicator is used to measure the power of radio signal. Let's get to know about the technology used in wireless power transmission. Nikola Tesla in the year 1980 demonstrated this technology first. Wireless power transmission uses three main systems, microwaves, solar cells and resonance. Wireless power transfer basically has two coils, the transmitter coil and a receiver coil. The transmitter coil is provided with alternating current to create a magnetic field and induce voltage in the receiver coil. This alternating current voltage is converted into direct current by electrons in the receiver which becomes working power. The circuit of the wireless power transfer consists of a gauge copper wire, a battery, a transistor and an LED. The construction of the circuit consists of a transmitter and a receiver. The working of the circuit takes place in the following steps. The main DC voltage is converted into high frequency alternating current. This alternating current is transferred to the coil via transmitter circuit. This alternating current induces a magnetic field in transmitter coil. The induced magnetic field generates a current in the adjacent receiver coil. Wireless power transfer has a wide range of applications. This technique is used to charge rechargeable batteries wirelessly. Mobile phones, laptop batteries, iPods, propeller clocks, etc. can be charged without wires using this technique. This method of charging offers a lower risk of electrical shock. Start. Now I am going to demonstrate a working model for wireless power transfer. This is the basic circuit for a wireless power transfer. This circuit consists of a transmitter coil and a receiver coil. An LED is connected to the receiver coil and the transmitter coil is connected with a key battery and a transistor. The working rule of the circuit is that when the current is switched on in the transmitter coil, it induces a voltage in the receiver coil. So let's check. See, When the current is switched on in the transmitter coil, it creates a magnetic field and induces current in the receiver coil and hence the LED is glowed. The electrons in the receiver coil convert the current into working power. That is the reason for glowing of the LED. So this was a very small working model of wireless power transmission. This model can be used even in large scale to produce more power. So this was all about wireless power transmission. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Rimi Chakravarti from Kasturba Gandhi Degree and PG College for Women. I am studying in BSc MECS second year. So today in this video I am going to explain you about pulse sensor which is generally a heartbeat sensor. So please watch this video till the end so you can know what is a pulse sensor. A pulse sensor or a heartbeat sensor is a monitoring device that measures the heart rate that is the speed of the heartbeat. A person's heartbeat is the sound of the valves in his heart expanding or contracting as they force blood from one region to other. There are two ways to monitor a heart rate. One is to manually check and the other is to use a heartbeat sensor. The principle behind the working of the heartbeat sensor is photoplethysmograph. According to this principle, the changes in the volume of the blood in an organ is measured by the changes in the intensity of the light passing through that organ. Usually, the source of the light in a heartbeat sensor would be an IR LED and the detector would be any photo detector like a photodiode, an LDR or a phototransistor. 
The basic heartbeat sensor consists of a light emitting diode and a detector like a light detecting resistor or a photodiode. The heartbeat pulses cause a variation in the flow of blood to different regions of the body. When tissue is illuminated with the light source that is light emitted by the LED, it either reflects or transmits the light. Some of the light is absorbed by the blood and the transmitted or the reflected light is received by the light detector. As described above, the basic components of a heartbeat sensor system are LDR, comparator, IC and a microcontroller. So this is a heartbeat sensor which contains control circuit and a clip to insert finger of a person. So here in this circuit diagram, the interfacing of the pulse sensor using an Arduino is shown. The sensor used in this is plug and play heart rate sensor. This kind of sensor is quite simple to understand as well as operate. And the next is the anatomy of the pulse sensor and as you can see the front and back part. And this is the visualizer of 64 BPM. So the pulse sensor applications include sleep tracking, health bands, monitoring of anxiety, remote patient monitoring. And as you can see, this is what a practical heartbeat sensor looks like. So guys, that was a small presentation on what is a pulse sensor. So now I'm going to show you how it works. So this is a 9 volt uh, battery as you can see it's a new battery and this is what a circuit actually looks like this is the LED and this is the sensor you can see it it's in the shape of a heart and this is the thing that we have to connect to the battery so now we'll connect this to this battery and we'll check the results so this is what we should do so I have connected and you can see a green light on the sensor so this is the light and this is the sensor and this is the LED as you can see it's glowing we are getting a red light and it's blinking so now now we can measure the pulse by keeping it on our hand where we can get the pulse rating and also under the finger so we can get by using this so this is what the whole thing is I hope you guys have understood what is a pulse sensor I hope you guys liked the video and thanks for watching.